Hi everyone, this is TJ from Avid and welcome to Pro Tools Fast Start. If you're new to Pro Tools and you're looking to get in here and start learning how to make your own music quickly and creatively, then you have come to the right place. Throughout this series of videos, I'm gonna show you how we made the track that you heard in the introduction step by step. And by the time we're done, you're gonna have all the tools you need to make your own music. Now, a quick note before we get started, this video in particular is for users of Pro Tools intro. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that once we get into it. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into Pro Tools and get started. A great place to start in any genre of music, and certainly the place that I started with this track is drums. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna create a drum track, and we're gonna program our drum pattern in Pro Tools. When you first open Pro Tools, you're gonna see this dashboard window. And on the left-hand side, you're gonna have some options. We're gonna go ahead and click on this Getting Started tab. The Getting Started tab has some excellent resources for you if you're new to making music in Pro Tools, but for today, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into one of these templates. Generally speaking, templates are a great tool for us to utilize because all of the guesswork of optimizing Pro Tools for what we're doing is already done for us. So let's click on Singer Songwriter and let's press Create. A new dialog box will open asking us what we want to name our session. I'm gonna name this Record a Song. We press Save and Pro Tools will create our new session for us. So once your Pro Tools session opens, this is what you're gonna be looking at. Now, there's kind of a lot to unpack here, but don't worry, I'm gonna take you through every step one at a time. When making a drum loop, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna set the tempo of our song. If we take our mouse and scroll up here to the top right-hand corner, we see tempo with a numerical value next to it. Right now, that tempo is set to 100 BPM or beats per minute. And if we press spacebar to play, this is what we hear. What you just heard is our click track, or in other words, a metronome to make sure that we stay in time and everything conforms to the beat of our song. 100 BPM is actually perfect for us today. You can adjust this, but we're gonna stay right here. Now that we have our tempo set, the next thing we need to do is we need to come over here to this icon with the play button. We're gonna right click it and make sure that loop and dynamic transport are both selected. After that, we're gonna come over to the left a little more and find this icon right here, Link Timeline and Edit Selection. We wanna make sure that this is off or not highlighted blue. I'm gonna talk a little bit about why this is important later, but for now, just make sure that this is not highlighted or turned off. On the left-hand side of our screen, you're gonna see tracks listed, and as you might've guessed, drums is the track that we're gonna be using today. First thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this track is record enabled by selecting this button right here. Once selected, it will start flashing red. And essentially that means that that is the track that we're going to hear out of our speakers as we use it. The next thing we're going to do is scroll over to these inserts. These inserts are where we can put plugins or in this case, virtual instruments like drum machines. There's already one loaded here called expand. So let's click on it and it opens the plugin. Now we have to choose a preset. If you come up here to the librarian menu, you can see that there's a ton of really amazing presets to choose from. Expand is a massive plugin and has way more sounds than just drums. So I highly encourage you to spend some time looking through these and finding sounds that inspire you. But for today, I'm gonna use this kit right here. Tight Electro Kit. If you wanna use this kit as well, it is included in your library and menu, so you can find it and follow along with us if you'd like. A quick note here, in the intro, I mentioned that this video was specifically for Pro Tools intro, and that's because in our original Fast Start series, we used a different drum plugin that is not included with Pro Tools intro, so if you follow along with the rest of the series from here on out, the drums might sound a bit different, but the part is identical and we made it the same way. Now we can close out of this window and get back to our edit window. Before we move on, we should name our track, which is a great habit to get into. If you double click right here where it says drums, a new dialog box opens and you can name your track whatever you want. 
I'm actually gonna keep this named drums because, well, it's a drum track. But as you make more songs in Pro Tools and create more tracks, naming becomes really important to keep you organized as your sessions grow. Press OK and your track is named. Now we're gonna program our drum loop with something called MIDI. If you're not familiar with MIDI, essentially it takes something that we're familiar with, like a keyboard in this case, and allows us to trigger our drum sounds with different keys. Let me show you what I mean. If we put our cursor anywhere on our drum track, our drum track is now reflected in our MIDI editor window. If we scroll down to the key that says one on it or C1 and click, we hear our kick track. And as we move our cursor up the keyboard, we can hear that all of our drum sounds are loaded onto different keys. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw in a pattern where each note corresponds to a particular key. The first thing we're gonna do in this process is set our loop length. So let me zoom in in our MIDI editor by pressing T. And to set your loop length, what you do is make sure that your cursor icon is showing in bars and beats. Click and drag to the end of the first bar to set a one bar loop. In order to add a new drum sound, all we have to do is double click next to the note in the place that we want it to go. If I double click here, it creates a kick. And if I double click here, it creates a snare. Let me create one more kick and one more snare. And let's hear what we have. And that is the start of a very basic drum beat. It's sounding good, but the next thing we wanna add is an essential part of any drum groove, and that is hi-hats. So let's find where our hi-hat tracks live on our keyboard. There they are. I'm gonna add a hi-hat to maybe every other column here. That's a really foundational drum groove and it really gives us a basis that we can work with. Let's hear what it sounds like now. Perfect. And now that we have our hi-hats in, we can actually turn off our metronome because they are keeping time for us. Scroll back up to the top right hand corner and click this button to turn off your metronome. Now let's talk for a second about velocity. Velocity essentially tells us how hard or soft our notes will play. Let me resize this window to make it a little bigger and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I take this hi-hat right here, for example, and move the velocity up, the note plays harder. If I move it down, the note plays softer. Velocity helps us to really humanize our drum grooves and make them a lot more dynamic. Let's make this drum groove more dynamic by adjusting the velocity on some notes. If I click and drag a box around all of our notes, I can adjust multiple velocities at once. Let's pull these all the way up so we have a broad dynamic range to work with. Here's what our drums sound like with all the velocity turned all the way up. Now to my ear, that sounds a bit robotic and I wanna make it more groovy, more human. So what I can do is I can select every other hi-hat by holding shift and selecting the hi-hats that I want. I'm gonna take these velocities and I'm gonna turn them way down. Let's hear what that sounds like. Now to me, that sounds a lot more human. It has a lot more groove and feel, and I really like that. Let's add another hi-hat in here just to mix it up a bit. And let's add one more note at the end. I like this little click sound, so I'm gonna put this right here. And here's the first part of our drum loop. Let's say that we wanna double the length of this pattern so we can add even more variety. There are a few ways to do this. One way is to drag a box around all of your notes. Press Command C or Control C if you're on a Windows machine. Click over here at the beginning of the next bar and press Command V or Control V to paste your notes and now we've doubled our loop length. 
Alternatively, we can click and drag a box around all of our notes and press Command D to duplicate our loop one time. Either way, we've achieved the same thing and that's making our loop twice as long. Now, if you remember, we set our loop length in Pro Tools to only play back one bar. So if we wanna hear our full two bar drum loop, we have to come up here and drag this all the way out to the end of our second bar so we hear both bars played back. Now our loop is twice as long, but for variation's sake, we don't want that same pattern to play twice. So let's change up the second pattern. I'm gonna add one more hi-hat here, and I'm gonna take this last note and adjust it. I like this open hi-hat sound, so I'm gonna actually replace our closed hi-hat. I click and press delete to delete that last hi-hat. Let's hear what we have. Great, I'm happy with that. So we're gonna close out of our MIDI editor by moving our mouse until we see this icon again and double click. Now what we have here is a clip and this clip represents the MIDI data that we just put into this track. If you wanna get back to your MIDI editor for any reason, a quick way to do that is to simply double click on your clip which pulls up your MIDI editor again. Our drum loop is two bars long, but I'm guessing that our song is probably gonna be a little longer than two bars. So I'm gonna show you how to loop this clip. We can do this simply by selecting our clip, right clicking, coming down here until we see loop, and clicking again. Pro Tools is gonna to ask us how many loops we want, but thankfully we don't need to know exactly how many loops our song is gonna be because this is really easily adjusted later on, and I'll show you how to do that. For now, let me just type in two and press OK. Now my clip has looped one time, but if I wanna adjust the loop length, if I take my mouse and scroll to the very edge of this clip, I see this loop icon appear. But if I click and drag, I can lengthen or shorten my loop to match my song length. Right now, I'm gonna keep this the length that it's at, but we can adjust this on the fly knowing this little trick. At this point, we need to change a quick setting because up until now, we've been locked in a specific loop so we can build a drum part. But when we're talking about editing a whole entire song, we wanna be able to move around quickly and not be stuck in one loop at a time. That's where this setting that I mentioned earlier, link timeline and edit selection comes back in really handy. If I click to enable it, now anywhere I click, in my session, Pro Tools will start playback from that point. And this is a much faster way to work when you're moving around an entire section and jumping from different parts of an arrangement. Let's move back to the beginning of our session and hear what our drum part sounds like so far. And just like that, we have a solid drum beat to build the rest of our song on top of. Now, even though this video was for users of Pro Tools intro, if you wanna follow along for the rest of the Fast Start series, videos two through six still apply to you. You have all the plugins you need for that original series. So feel free to jump into video two and follow along with us. In our next video, we use MIDI to track keys and bass for our song. So make sure you join us for that one. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and we can't wait to hear what you come up with.